Hello and welcome to News24. We are talking about the big breaking news story of the day. The ANC has recalled President Jacob Zuma. News24 editor Adrian Basson, what a day it's been and it might not yet be over. All we can do now is wait for him to tend his resignation, I guess. Yes, Alet. I mean, we, we heard in the early morning hours already um, uh, that Zuma has been recalled, but it's always kind of something to hear it officially being Absolutely. confirmed by Ace Makashile, the Secretary General, who didn't look like he enjoyed that press conference at all. One bit. Um, I mean, he is really Jacob Zuma's biggest supporter in that ANC top six, apart from Jesse Duarte, the Deputy Secretary General. And one could see almost the pain in his face having to announce that the ANC has finally recalled Jacob Zuma as ANC president. This has been a long and tumultuous term, of, uh, term in office for Jacob Zuma. He was elected ANC president in December 2007 in Polokwane. Uh, he came in on a victim who ticket uh, claiming that Thabo Mbeki and the Scorpions victimized him uh, with corruption cases and other things. Um, but he's just never lived up to the standards that we as a country have for a president. Um, and the ANC had now recalled him today. We're still not sure for the, which reasons. Um, one would have thought they could have used the state capture case, uh, maybe the impending corruption charges against him, but no. Um, the ANC says that he did nothing wrong. That's not why he was recalled. It's really about stability and unity. Yes, yeah, so as you say, um, one of the big points of contention from that media conference that um, ANC Secretary General Ace Magashule gave is that they didn't really want to at first give us the reasons for why they're recalling President Zuma. I took a journalist asking him, you know, you've kept us on tenterhooks, you've postponed, postponed Sona, take the nation into your confidence and tell us what are the reasons. And then there was nothing about the corruption or the, you know, the fact that he broke his oath, oath of office, but really more only political reasons. Mm. Yeah, look, so the ANC has got this amazing ability to almost deal um, with facts at two different levels, or the truth. There's the, there's the real truth, what I would say, that the, you know, the stuff we write about, the, the cases, the corruption, the very serious corruption allegations against Zuma, his family, the Guptas, and then Kandla, constitutional court judgment, uh, where the court found that he had broken his oath of office. And then there's this other layer of you know, almost uh, kind of muddled truth that the ANC believes, their own spin mm. about the world, that Zuma had done nothing wrong. Ace Makhashule has said this often and he had done nothing wrong. He's not being recalled because he did anything wrong. That, of course, is a great reason for Zuma to go to court, to say, well, I'm being recalled here for not doing anything wrong. But let's park that issue for a second. If you look at the ANC's statement uh, announcing his recall, the only matter that the, some of the tangible things they list here um, is period of anxiety. You know, South Africans are anxious about this what's going on in the country as a result of the unresolved matter of transition. Now, this refers to the ANC's uh, elective conference in December where Sir Ramaphosa won. So what Makhashile was really telling us here is that only because Ramaphosa had won in December um, and we know that he wasn't Zuma's preferred candidate, Zuma now has to go. Um, we know that's not the case. We know that there's people in the ANC NEC, people like uh, like Derek Hanekom and people like Ronald Lamola and people like Joel Nechetenze who's been arguing for months and months in NEC meetings um, for Zuma to go. Um, you know, these allegations against him has always been there and we know that this had an impact um, finally on Zuma leaving office, that there are a lot of people in the ANC, people like Pravin Gordon, who's trying to clean up this mess left behind by Jacob Zuma. That definitely played a role. Nobody's believing Makhashule's lies because they are lies. But this is as far as the ANC is willing to go on the record to say why, why he's no longer, um, uh, or according to them, why he should step down as president of South Africa. Yes, and then also them, you know, sticking to the story of them, him being, still being the president of the country and them treating them with him with, with respect and not wanting to humiliate him. But of course, someone like Ace Makashule himself is highly implicated in something like state capture. So he couldn't really go into details like that at a press conference. He could easily have been drawn into a conversation about that yes. being implicated himself. Look, so Ramaphosa played a very good game here. I think we, has to, we, we have to give him his dues. He knew he had a very slight balance um, of power over uh, the Zuma camp um, at, after Nazareth. He only won with 50 plus 1 percent of the votes. Um, he beat Nkosa Zanat Lamini Zuma, who was the Zuma camp's candidate. So he knew he wasn't going to completely come in and do whatever he wanted to do. He had to treat softly, he had to be sensitive. And I think he was trying his real best to show to the ANC and the NEC that he is not going to humiliate Zuma. That was his tone from the start. And when we listened to Ace Makhashile today, he again emphasized 
uh, that the way in which the ANC, led by Roma Poza, handled these negotiations were in a sensitive way with the utmost dignity. Um, you know, my colleague uh, Monli Makanya in City Press wrote a week ago that Zuma deserves to be humiliated, and I actually agree with that. But Ramaphosa went with a very s sensitive um, a, a viewpoint to say, look, uh, 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 Mr. Zuma or Comrade Zuma, please resign in the interest of the country. He didn't go as he could have done and said, look, you are an embarrassment to the party. We're probably going to lose the elections with you at the helm next year. Please go. Um, on the one hand, that, that, is, that is the game Ramaphosa played to get rid of Zuma politically. Um, on the other hand, Ramaphosa has been very clear over the past few days that he's not going to uh, put up with corruption, that the corruption or the anti-corruption drive is going to be top of his agenda coming into government. So a number of those comrades last night who voted out Zuma must be nervous themselves because it's not only Jacob Zuma that's involved in, in state capture and corruption allegations. There's a number of ANC Absolutely. politicians who've got allegations against their own names. Yeah. So the ANC maybe not coming across so strong in this press, uh, in this press conference as they would have wanted. Um, they're not willing to be drawn on whether they gave President Zuma a deadline for him to resign. Although Ace Magishule then did say that we should expect to hear from him tomorrow. Did they or did, didn't they give him a deadline? I don't know. I'm getting confused with the days now. Today's Tuesday. So yes, as Mokhashule said Wednesday morning, Alet, we heard this afternoon from, from two NEC sources who were in these conversations that Zuma indeed has been given until midnight tonight on Tuesday to resign. Um, we still haven't received that resignation or a notice of, of address to the nation. So, so that's obviously uh, not something that, that, that is on the cards yet for today. But Mahashuli has said he knows Zuma will address the nation tomorrow and he will contact the media. So it's a bit of a wait and see game now. Um, it's obviously a ridiculous notion that the ANC wouldn't have given Zuma some time. It can't just be open-ended and up to him now to, be, um, to, to, to resign. Mm -hmm. and because at some stage, Parliament will have to step in and, and, uh, and, and do, uh, remove him through a motion of no confidence or impeachment. Um, so I'm sure there were some timelines discussed with Zuma. And I think an, an announcement, if Zuma decides to, to do the right thing, I will say, and resign is imminent. Yeah, well, then, especially given the fact that he said that President Zuma wanted three to six more months to stay on as president, giving reasons such as the fact that he had to still chair certain meetings, certain summits like the BRICS summit. Um, but surely that can't be the only reasons why he would want to stay on. It's interesting that that's the big reason that, according to Mahashule, the, the deal, the so-called deal that uh, Ramaphosa presented to Zuma didn't work out. Um, you know, we had heard a lot of things. We had heard that Zuma asked for immunity against prosecution, that he asked for his legal fees to be covered, for security to be given. Um, you know, I think Ramaphosa would have used the, the privileges available to a former president to probably allay some of those fears. All former presidents are entitled to some level of benefits that they had during their term. Um, the interesting thing is this three to six months. I don't for a moment believe Mahashile when he, sees that, when he says that this was about chairing some SADC meeting or SADC, uh, 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 you know, committee. Um, I think there was something more sinister going on here. I think Zuma has to deliver on something. We can speculate whether it's the nuclear deal or something else, whether he maybe wanted to see out at least the start of the Zondo Commission in state capture. Um, but he has lost. He's lost this round. Uh, Ramaphosa has won. Well, we know that he's not one to be put into a corner that easily. Is there any reason to expect anything but a resignation tomorrow? Look, I think if Jacob Zuma decides not to resign, he will be uh, uh, like Samson, almost trying to take the temple down with him. I think he, he, then, then it's really Kamikaze pilot, um, you know, who will take down the party with him. Yeah. Um, you know, if he forces Parliament to bring a motion of no confidence, um, that will just really be chaotic for the ANC. Firstly, the ANC has got to get past the fact that the first motion of no confidence in Parliament was sponsored by the EFF. It will be an EFF-sponsored motion of no confidence, not one by the ANC. So the party will have to decide whether they're going to participate in that one or whether they really insist stubbornly on bringing their own motion. Um, you know, secondly, I mean, Zuma, for Zuma to stick around will just send such a wrong message about everything he has said about the ANC, that he's a loyal cater, that he's a disciplined cater of the ANC, that the ANC is at, at the center of power. This will defy everything he has ever said against the ANC. And it will make things very difficult for his allies inside the ANC if he doesn't want to want to want to vacate uh, the union buildings. So I still expect him uh, to resign. I do think he will he will probably in his resignation statement you know, um, uh, dish out some, uh, 
some maybe not so veiled threats or, or, or criticism against some comrades and colleagues. Um, uh, you know, this is obviously not what he wanted. We are told that he was emotional, that he was angry um, last night when the top officials went to speak to him. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, obviously, if we, if we move to something like an impeachment in Parliament, you could even lose a lot of his benefits, which, which he really can't afford. Well, we will certainly be staying with the story. Make sure to stay up to date and follow us on News24.